So this is just a quick tutorial for my really quick uh, clockwork time-lapse machine that I built after seeing a blog post on CheesyCam and it kind of reminded me a bit of uh, the really expensive automated uh, time-lapse sliders and time-lapse heads that you see but uh, obviously quite a lot cheaper so I wanted to do something like that. Now I don't have a little GoPro and the only thing I can really do time-lapse photos with is my uh, 550D so I wanted something a little bit uh, bigger than the small egg timer that he was using so I had a look around and I managed to find uh, sort of a big kitchen timer which I got from Maplins and I'll put a link to the actual model that I got in the description below if you did want to use that build but pretty much anything uh, that's reasonably large uh, more than anything to create a reasonably solid base will do I imagine but uh, if your camera falls off and breaks it's not uh, not my fault this is probably not a good thing to do on a tripod and anywhere really where the camera has an opportunity to fall on the floor so whenever I use it I put it on a table or a big flat surface so if the thing does topple over it's not going to fall um, any more than an inch or two. First thing I did was take apart the timer I pulled off the front uh, actual twisty bit and then unscrewed all of the screws I discarded the um, back uh, kind of support because it held it all at an angle so I was left with the actual mechanism the front plate with all of the numbers on and the twisty twisty timer bit. Once I got all of that I sat down and sort of looked at all the bits for one tried to work out how I'd actually get all of this to form some kind of stable platform. In the end I decided to actually uh, glue, hot glue, the actual timer mechanism back into the face plate but on the front and you'll uh, be able to see that a little bit in some of the photos here. It's probably not really, really secure, but all of the weight's going down on it, so I figured that uh, it would be okay, and this was just really an experiment. Also, it's quite nice because you still have the numbers on the front, so you have some rough idea of how the time's going to work, although with all the weight on, it might not necessarily still be over the course of an hour or 30 minutes or however long you want. It might, might deviate a bit because of that. So, after that was all hot glued in place, I thought about how I'd mount the camera on top. I came up with a couple ideas and then I realized that I had a piece left over from my really, really cheap shoulder cam. I think it's the $24 shoulder cam if you're in America. I think it cost me about uh, 29 or 30 pounds in the UK. Just got it off eBay. Again, I'll put a link to the one that I got. Now with that, I got this um, extra extension piece, which I don't use and most people say is rubbish. So uh, if you've got that, you can use one of these. If not, you see roughly what's going on here so it's not going to be too difficult to fabricate something that will do do the job. The reason that uh, this was particularly good is because it has a long slit in the middle where the actual screw comes up and that was just the right size for the twisty timer head to slot in, bit of super glue, bit of hot glue and it's really really firmly bonded in there now. I still have a little bit of play in the screw so that actually means that I can move the camera forwards or backwards to change the center of gravity um, once it's on board. That's actually quite good because if you're using different size lenses then the balance is going to be a little bit off and it might be very unstable but I've found uh, with the Tokina uh, 11 to 16 that it actually sits on very nicely and is uh, pretty firm. I took some photos of the camera itself on the rig but that was with the Sigma 30mm Prime on. Again I was able to move it around and get it into a fairly solid position, although the prime for most applications would probably be a little bit um, too narrow uh, with its field of view, so I'll probably use a wider angle lens. And on the back there, I've added in just a small clip, which was from a very cheap camera phone holder that came with a little tripod I got years ago. Uh, if you don't have one of those, you can just uh, improvise whatever you've got, um, a clamp or just some gaffer tape, whatever. That's just for holding the actual time-lapse timer and keeps all the wires out of the way. If anything touches the camera or the time-lapse timer or the wire that's connecting the camera to the time-lapse timer, it will probably stop. I had this in one of the time-lapses that I did. It just stopped it dead and it was just a tiny, tiny catch it made on the table. So it's good to keep it all up and out of the way. I'll put a little video of a simple time-lapse I did in the kitchen and yeah, hopefully that'll give you a good idea of the kind of effect that you can get with this. Hope this video has been useful and uh, if your expensive camera and lens setup falls on the floor because you try and build this, I relieve myself of all responsibility because it's not very stable. So, good luck.